What's up guys, it's Eventon here. We're actually gonna be going pretty quick with this video because a lot of this stuff is pre-recorded and I wanted to just voice over it because a lot of this content was just taken over the course of hours and hours and hours. So I just had to chop it up later. So if you guys do want to get involved in the Crimson Harvest content, you're going to want to pull up your D scan and go to either the Crimson Gauntlet, like at the bottom or at the very top, the Shining Flame bases. Uh, the content seems very, very similar. To be honest, I didn't see much of a difference between the two. Uh, there probably are some differences, but didn't seem to affect me too much. So this is me just briefly going through it. I'm actually in my uh, looting Sinesis right now. And I'm just kind of going through this content, just seeing what's happening. So uh, that first where the gate before this was kind of like the introductory room. There's going to be two gates. There's one active one, which is what you have to take in order to get started. And there's a shortcut room, which you can only activate if you have like a uh, shortcut key, which you can get by running this content that you're able to occasionally loot. So uh, this is that last room I was in was kind of the, for the first room, which does spawn quite a few different NPCs. And there's the second room. This is technically the last room of the content. And there, as you can see, there's already a Tengu in there uh, chilling out there. And so as I went through, I was already being targeted. So I'll write this at this point, I'm just burning away. So I am able to just cloak and just chill out. So I'm not being targeted by the NPCs. And so this is what I was doing. I was doing honestly a bit of ninja looting. I was doing uh, a bit of running this content in the Gila. And so they do recommend that you use a battle cruiser or a battleship. Um, at first I was using like a century fit Dominix for the most part, but it just seemed it was, it just wasn't very effective because the ships are always going to warp to you and be right on top of you. So that ended up not working well. So I went with my Gila, um, found the content was pretty sim simple and sorry if like the video seems to be a bit stretched with the, uh, the settings I had at the time. I fixed it later, but this is my passive Gila fit. Um, I basically have purgers in the rigs, uh, large shield extenders in the mids as well as uh, em and thermal resist and it's pretty straightforward I'll, of course i'll put it down in the description below so i mainly was just showing this content just to show you like hey this is the first room that you go in after like the intro room you will get webbed you will get scrammed um, it's honestly not that difficult i was able to do my passive gila and as you can see here in this room uh, i was getting uh, neuted by four different ships so in my opinion the biggest threat in these rooms are just the newts and so there are sages, there are some frigates that will try and nude out your ship. So those should be your priority if you have anything that's even remotely active um, on your ship. So I typically put my drones on the cruisers that are nuding me. And then I usually put my rockets on the frigates that are nuding me as well. So usually they're the shepherds and there's like another type. I can't remember off the top of my head. So sorry this video is going by. I, wanted to, I didn't want this video to be like 25 minutes because it very easily could have. So I actually cut up a lot of things. Uh, sped it up things like that so as you can see this is a kind of a good example of what you'll typically see in that first room which is uh, usually like four cruisers and four uh, frigates at a time that are warping in uh, as far as i remember i don't remember any battle cruisers spawning in this first room there might be like one but it's nothing that's going to really overwhelm you dps wise the only time i really felt threatened while doing this type of content when i was getting heavily neutered by a lot of cruisers at once and i was just like not focusing them down um, another thing about this content is that your drones will get focused down as you can see on the bottom right where my drones are a lot of them are like you know a lot of them had their uh, armor eaten through and things like that so they will get focused uh, pretty heavily so this is me uh, I cleared out uh, the first wave in that first room and so this is kind of like I said earlier okay so there are battle cruisers that spawn in that first room which isn't uh, too bad at all so honestly this content if you actually, I'm running in a Gila, which I know is like a very overtuned cruiser for the most part. I mean, it could easily push um, battle cruiser or like battleship levels of tank, especially if you're orbiting like I am, which honestly isn't needed. I could have just sat where I was and honestly not done much. So uh, again, over here, we're going to be looking at some of the resist, which is just thermal and EM. Sorry if that went really quickly, but I mean, it's pretty well known. Blood Raiders, EM and thermal resist. Those are their big holes. I was using EM at first, but then I started using hammerheads and those seemed to work really well, at least when I was in the Gila. So using thermal damage, you know, those drones just typically hit harder because they have a higher uh, damage modifier. So I was just using those. Those seem to work really, really well. And so as you can see, this is kind of what the, this is almost the exact group, yeah, that you're gonna see. So you will see probably about four cruisers, uh, one battle cruiser, and probably like three, uh, Frigates, when you do like as the waves come in, this is pretty typical um, if you're running it by yourself. So 
Again, I was orbiting, honestly, in my Gila fit, uh, and especially right now, healers are extremely cheap, and I don't think at any point I was ever below half HP <laughs> on my shield. So this content's pretty straightforward. And I think between the uh, bounties and being able to loot that battleship, because honestly, the, the loot itself on the ships aren't great. You actually get the majority of your um, isk from... Actually, okay, this is actually me cutting over to my... I was actually running four... Sorry if it's like really laggy uh, and I'm using potato graphics because I was actually running four instances uh, or four applications of EVE at the same time on my seven-year-old computer. So I was running my Gila. I was running the Sinesis that was actually trying to uh, ninja loot this as well as uh, two other miners because I did notice that some of the sites actually did have... Um, like asteroids in the area and so it looks like it has some like limited time asteroid content in there and so this was actually pretty risky like i was definitely not alone with this and uh, i was actually pretty quick getting in and out right there and as you could see as i looted that it was about 44 mil um, worth of loot so i actually got really fortunate with some of these uh, ninja loots and of course i just snap snap right back to my gila that was taking out the uh, battleship which uh, the battleship at the very end in the last room i would say makes up about not including bounties probably makes up about 80% of the loot. So you really want to make sure that you kill the battleship and that you are close enough to loot it because people will ninja loot it from you like I was doing prior. So I actually ended up getting a um, cold iron skin. I have trying to remember for which ship, but um, that's it right there. So this is me in the first room, um, just kind of showing you what it looks like in the gate. But this is also me sending my two miners into this room because I did notice that there was a few asteroids and I was kind of like, hmm, I'll go ahead and... Uh, Take a look at what these asteroids are doing so this is just like me going into the next room um, for the most part so overall i mean i feel like this content again this is just me showing like the em and thermal resist but overall like this content isn't that difficult it is very easily soloable i've been seeing people use like very large heavy like rattlesnakes things like that in my opinion it's, it's a bit of overkill of course there's a bit of um, uh, safety i've seen people doing it in, like ravens and things like that um, if, I mean, if you need to use those and you like using those ships, like definitely go for it. But my Gila seems to be uh, more than enough. And I think this is the lowest I was ever um, on my shield, which was probably about 60%, but I wasn't really paying attention. And so um, the loot on the on these are, aren't too bad. And don't be surprised because there are something that drop like clone bodies or like coffins or whatever. And those actually do sell in Jita for about 850,000. So sometimes if you get 10 of them, you actually end up getting about eight mil. So don't let the estimated value uh, fool you. Uh, this is my Sinesis. This is my Crimson Looter. This is what I was using, essentially three Halcyon lows. I was actually using a civilian <laughs> damage control because that's all that could fit with the amount of CPU. And I needed to have a cloak. So when I go into that third room, I actually try to go ahead of the ships ahead of time and then just duck into an area and cloak. Um, and then of course I do have two like the stabilizer rigs as well as the low engine housing. So if you do have uh, evasive maneuvering five and you do have three of those, you should be below, you should be at like 1.99 if you use the engine housing. But if you don't have evasive maneuvering five, you might need three of those. And again, I'll throw these fits down in the description for the most part. So this is me cloaked. I was just literally just letting this Tengu do all the work for me. And uh, of course, with all the warp core stabilizers, your lock-on range is very, very short. For me, it was like 11,000 meters. So I had to get really, really close to the ship. Um, I was getting focused by one of the frigates. So I actually had to like burn away for a while just so I can get some distance. I was actually even overheating just so I can kind of get out of range of it. And then I actually ended up bouncing back because I didn't wasn't sure how much it was really nuding, but I just didn't want to take that risk. So again, this is me. I'm just hugging it. I'm turning off my afterburner because I don't want it to uh, affect my line time too much because you actually, your line time gets better as that's off, at least in this fit. And so I ended up ninja looting about 12 million right there, which, you know, isn't amazing, but at least it's something. Um, and this is just the type of content. I mean, this, this type of content has always been around whenever there's events happening. Like, you will kill ships. There will be people ninja looting, trying to get the skins, um, uh, implants, things like that. So so there's the that's what it's called, war clone blanks. So the estimated value, so even though it said we only got... A quarter of a million s those war clone bl blanks actually go for about eight hundred fifty thousand in gita so that's probably about 13 mil in loot roughly so it's not terrible 
So don't be alarmed if you loot something and it's like less than a mil in estimated value. And so um, this was actually my alt looter. This is actually how much she looted in about two or three runs. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. And I had some really good ones off screen that I really wish I was able to capture while I was recording, but I was just able to miss it. So uh, these are my miners from earlier. I was uh, mining these um, Thonic uh, Atars, Cathonic Atars. I don't no idea what those are, but it, it seems to be a limited time ore that is used to make uh, limited time uh, for like blueprints and things like that. I'm not sure exactly. I think I do show it here a bit later. And I don't know if it's like a weird trick or treat thing because sometimes the asteroids will literally have hundreds of those ores inside of it. And other times it'll literally just have one ore and that's it. So like you can actually activate your laser for about four seconds and then turn it off and it'll just completely destroy the asteroid. And so, okay, so a little bit of information on that for the most part, but yeah, so this is sorry for like the potato graphics. And as you can see now, like I, I was able to kind of fix the, the screen a bit uh, better for you guys. So it you were able to reprocess it and it makes this, uh, I'm not even going to, attempt to pr pronounce that but these are actually selling like a for about last i checked for about ten thousand in jita so these are selling as good as like the talisonites or even like the racavines but the issue is that like the the yield is so low on some of these asteroids sometimes it literally has one and other times it'll have a few hundred and honestly i just don't think it's worth the effort to have these miners on standby on the sides um as it pertains to uh waiting out for those missions to run and then you have to send in your miners at the end of the day so uh so yeah right now i'm just showing an icon screen because i've actually been talking longer than the video so if you guys have any questions uh, about the new content let me know down in the comments below i would love it if you guys would like comment subscribe and have you guys heard the uh, crimson harvest content i would love to know what you guys have experiences have been uh, let me know how the Gila fit goes and as well as that ninja looter um, the crimson looter fit that i sent you guys as well and hope you guys have a good one fly safe